Hello, my name is Doug Hubble and welcome to Astrophotography Tutorials. I have a special guest, Chris Gomez today, and he's going to show us the Orion Thin Off-Axis Auto Guider. A lot of times this is, can, can be difficult for uh, most people, but I'll tell you what, Chris has got some great tips here. If you would like to go through the index of all the items he's covering today, just go ahead and, and click on there right now. So on to Chris. My name is Chris Gomez and today we're going to be talking about um, off-axis guiders and when to use them and why we use them. And so if we look at uh, back here, uh, the setup that I currently have there, uh, we have a 400 millimeter uh, focal length uh, short tube 80 Orion refractor. And then here uh, on the bottom we have the Stellar View uh, 70 triplet. And now that uh, with the field flattener um, is going to put you at a focal length of about 325 or so. And so essentially when we're thinking about the uh, guiding through a separate scope and the corrections it's making uh, for the errors of your tracking, um, when your uh, guiding uh, focal lengths are and, and your actual imaging focal lengths are about the same, you're really not going to notice a lot of uh, difference in the errors and most of the time uh, you'd be surprised how long you can image and not really have any errors show up on your images so um, if we start going to uh, higher uh, focal lengths for example my Newtonian which is at 800 millimeters in focal length we still have a good ratio uh, at 400 millimeters guiding uh, versus 800 millimeters of imaging um, where we can go ahead and still guide and those errors in your tracking are not going to be that noticeable. Um, the problem will start happening when we start going to a bigger uh, focal length scope um, like this RC uh, uh, scope I recently got the focal length on this is 1600 and most other ones are going to be uh, up in the 2000s and things like that so uh, this is imaging at a much uh, more zoomed in uh, uh, portion of the sky and so a lot of the small errors that are being picked up by your guide scope if you were using one separately on top are are not going to be uh, noticeable enough um, to where you're imaging at and so when you are imaging at a deeper kind of longer focal length the errors are going to be more critical and your guide scope won't be able to pick those up and so as far as your guiding uh, graph goes it's going to show like it's it's guiding great but those smaller errors that are more noticeable at a higher focal length are really going to start to show in your images um, another thing to consider is as your scopes start getting bigger um, we start thinking about additional weight and what your mount can carry and so shedding the actual load of having an additional guide scope on top will be a good idea um, uh, because the off axis guider is definitely going to be a lot uh, less weight on your whole uh, mount load capacity so excuse me so uh, those are just some of the things to think about uh, mainly when we're imaging at higher focal lengths and then also to kind of uh, save um, as far as your weight goes with your uh, mount capacity uh, shedding off some of that weight um, and using a off-axis guide are going to be two uh, things that you can look for okay so we're going to move into kind of the off-axis guider um, the one that i purchased was the orion uh, thin off-axis guider and we're going to show you kind of what it comes with how we assemble it and how it works the components of the thin off-axis guider and kind of what it came with and we'll show you this way um, mainly you can go on the Orion website and it will show you kind of all the pieces it comes with mainly your off-axis guider um, a couple of extensions um, a two inch uh, kind of nozzle there and uh, kind of everything you pretty much need and that's one of the reasons why I went with the Orion off-axis guider because a lot of times um, different companies will just sell you the off-axis guider alone and then you kind of have to spend a little bit more money getting all the other pieces all right so how does an off-axis guider work uh, compared with a um, separate guide scope a guide scope is kind of looking at everything 
that is visible through the aperture of your telescope, um, of your guide scope, essentially. And so it tends to have more stars visible um, and available for you to guide on. So uh, a lot of people don't like using uh, the off-axis guiders because they complain that uh, picking up guide stars may be a little bit difficult. And so um, when we're using an off-axis guider like so, we have a usually a shaft that comes down that holds a little prism that picks up part of the light from your imaging, uh, from your light cone that travels um, through your scope and picks up the light that's uh, uh, traveling through your scope there uh, through this prism, shoots it up into the top here where your guide camera will go and so um, you will not have access to all the light that's everywhere else, only the light that's in your prism. And so a lot of times when you have guide stars all throughout the field, um, you may not be able to find a suitable star if your guide stars are down over here and your prism is up here. Um, that's not a problem. Usually uh, when we're using an off-axis guiders, we're imaging at deeper uh, uh, at longer focal lengths and so uh, a lot of times we're doing uh, galaxies and things like that and so if we center our image uh, on the center of our scope um, we can easily rotate uh, the off-axis guider to kind of pick up the light at different portions of our image and sure enough you should be able to find a guide star with really having no effect on the frame of your uh, galaxy. Um, if you're imaging uh, other th things like uh, nebulas, star clusters, really finding guide stars is not going to be a problem, uh, mainly because they are going to be more abundant uh, stars for you to choose from as far as uh, guide stars and really finding guide stars should not be a problem. Um, one of the things that uh, uh, through my reading and kind of research of all the axis guiders is you want to make sure you have a very sensitive camera and so um, the one that I use from my guide scope is the Starshoot Auto Guider um, and this one with our Orion is kind of designed to just thread up here right up top as so um, and this camera although it's great with my guide scope it really is not as sensitive um, with picking up guide stars with the small prism and so what I went ahead was um, I bought a QHY uh, 5L2 monochrome uh, uh, guide camera which um, is a lot more sensitive um, and was recommended to me to use with off-axis guiders um, and so we'll put that aside there. Um, so again mainly kind of recapping how this off-axis guider works it's mainly using this prism to pick off the light uh, to find stars and basically to find stars around your image you can go ahead and rotate this kind of all the way around onto on your on your scope to find stars when you have found one you can just lock everything in and you should be fine um, this is usually what you have to do for galaxies for star clusters and things like that um, you'll have plenty of stars to choose from all the way around and so that won't be an issue. Okay, here we're going to show you how I assemble uh, the components for this off-axis guider and how I use it uh, with my particular scope. Again, um, we are going to attach uh, our pieces here and some of them, uh, like I said, pretty much all the pieces I needed come with uh, the Orion uh, thin out off-axis guider already. I only had to purchase some additional spacers to kind of be able to reach the focus um, that I needed. Okay, And so uh, to the back end, this is where the, the camera comes up. The actual prism, the, the portion that's flat on the prism is the portion that goes toward the scope. So um, toward the back here, um, let's see where our adapters are here. Okay. So here essentially it has kind of two uh, little clips there for you to clip it on and then just uh, tighten them on both sides there. Um, this is going to be uh, an adapter that has T-threads and that way um, you, can adapt, uh, uh, you can actually add your uh, 
T ring onto here. There we go. Okay, so that allows your again your T ring to essentially screw on there. This is where my camera will attach um, and to the actual uh, front portion here we are going to attach our two, mil uh, two inch um, uh, nose cone there and this has internal threadings again with the adapter that it came with and I'm going to slowly just go ahead and thread that in. Okay, and that goes there. Here's our, our two inch adapter there and essentially this is going to slide right into your telescope there um, and again this is how you would turn to find those guide stars all the way around wherever you like it you can go ahead and lock it in place all right so essentially that is the assembly of the scope to the camera um, and then we're going to also add um, particularly for my uh, uh, scope and my DSLR with that camera. I had to order um, a five millimeter extension which you thread on to there and then I also um, found that uh, you can use the C to T uh, conversion ring up top here um, essentially because your uh, QHY is not going to thread on directly like that Starshoot Auto Guider. It will thread on using the provided adapter. Um, but you have to get that spacing so exact um, that I found it easier to buy this helical focuser. It's a Botter uh, helical focuser that's a uh, has T threadings on there, which I can attach there to the to the top. It has a nice, uh, about five to seven millimeter, I think, uh, focus range uh, that's real nice and smooth. And then again, uh, I can just attach my guide camera on here uh, because it this guide camera is about two, uh, uh, sorry, an inch and a quarter in diameter, kind of like an eyepiece, and just tighten it there. Um, and when I'm trying to achieve focus, I can. Uh, go ahead and kind of fine-tune without having to play around too much with the uh, Screws that are on here and show you how that would attach to your uh, Camera again. This would work with uh, CCD cams if you have a DSLR. This is mainly how it would attach and so um, we Kind of look at our DSLR camera it basically attaches directly through the t-ring and you got to find uh, where it kind of sits in okay not that way okay and so all right once your guide camera and thin off access guider is actually uh, attached to your camera, you're going to want to look down the um, down the sensor and make sure that the actual, I'm not sure if you're able to see there, but you want to look to make sure that your actual uh, prism is not projecting too far in where it is actually uh, in the way of your imaging sensor. If not, when you take your images, you're going to see that shadowing um, on your image uh, from the prism so you want to adjust your shaft screws up here just enough to where that prism is just barely touching um, uh, part of your sensor um, that kind of shadowing which is minimal can be taken away with your normal flats and so that should not be uh, a main concern um, the bottom screws on here are mainly for the main shaft up and down it sets the prism in the vertical dimension um, and then it has smaller set screws here and on the side and this adjusts your um, actual focal length of your camera up and down on this shaft and now 
you you don't have to get that two uh, that uh, uh, this helical focuser that you have up here but this definitely makes focusing your camera a lot easier and then setting it um, if you didn't have this helical focuser essentially you would have to get the spacing right um, within between your cam your actual guide camera and your imaging camera um, and you would have to kind of uh, adjust these little allen uh, screws that you allen key screws that you have over here um, to actually reach focus and so if you're having trouble now uh, essentially when you let's say you, you hook up your actual uh, off-axis guider you have your camera back here you first reach focus with your camera lock everything down then you're gonna have to play around with these little, tiny little screws here to kind of get that focus where your camera is actually in focus and your uh, guide cameras in focus and so if you're dealing with these uh, small little uh, screws here um, that can sometimes mess with the focus and so I found it easier if you have this helical focuser you attach your camera you get it in the ballpark of where you need to be and then you can easily fine-tune it here with the helical focuser once you're done you can lock the focus there and then not have to touch it at all um, a lot of things that you have to take into account are the focal length of your of your camera and your uh, guide camera. A lot of times you may need to um, add additional kind of before you attach your T-ring here or with the CCD camera you may need to add spacers uh, between the thin, uh, a thin uh, off axis guider and your camera or you may need to add additional uh, spacers up top here. In my case, I just had to add the T uh, ring adapter uh, that attaches my camera and only a five millimeter uh, spacer. And then again, I have all this helical focuser spacing to play with to be able to focus. Um, and so um, I hope this kind of clarifies things with when to use an off axis guider and why to use one and I hope this will encourage you to kind of try it out. This focal length at 1600, um, you know, I've tried 900 seconds, uh, which is about 50 minutes uh, of exposures and really get nice pinpoint stars. And I'd anticipate that if I even went longer, uh, they would still maintain pinpoint uh, stars. And mainly it's because the errors that your uh, mount and tracking is uh, producing are being able to be corrected at that focal length because you are guiding at the same focal length of your imaging system. Hope you enjoyed it and we'll see you soon sometime. I would like to extend a special thank you to Chris Gomez for sharing his tips and tricks about the off-axis auto guider. If you have a special tip or trick you would like to share, please contact me at dhubble at gmail.com and I'll help you get started sharing your tip here. If this is your first time watching, I would like you to subscribe. I publish two astrophotography videos on the 1st and 15th of every month. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you soon.